And us that's coming from the poorer communities, our creativity is our biggest thing that we've got. Like that's mm. I think most people really, really underestimate. Like then for something that we can have that can make something out of nothing. Mm. England hasn't got nothing else that they're manufacturing for the world right now. At all. Killer Keller official dot com. You need the Kellervision app. 24-7 mini documentaries, podcasts, live shows, DJ live streams, top five, subscription packages, plus products for all your podcasts and street culture sports. Download it from the App Store for free today. Beatbox created. Killer Keller. And we need to talk about world music and street culture. Killer Keller podcast. Jump that cat on that yeah, one. Yeah, yeah. Ladies and gentlemen, Killer Keller podcast live and direct central London or central as you need to be. Serves you right. Tune in. Sharing is caring and all that business. If you haven't checked out the Television app, free download iPhone, Android for all your street culture sports. Big shout out to graffitikings.co.uk and everybody else in the support team. Um, we have a force of nature in the human form sitting with us today. Oh my God. <laughs> Defenders Entertainment. Entrepreneur, philanthropist, um, creator, and collaborator alongside people such as, to begin, Swedish House Mafia, The Vamps, uh, Chip, Dizzy Rascal, Drake. I mean, you name it, he's in there, he's in the mix. He's, he's like, you know, he's like the raw ingredients. If you don't know him, get to know. He's the mighty producer extraordinaire, Corey Johnson, inside the place. Oh, my guy, man, I need to get you on the tee. I need to, I, with that intro, I need to just boom, chop that and use that again. No, but it's a pleasure, pleasure, pleasure being here, man. No, no I'm telling you, man. I, but no, but um, serious as well, a lot of people may not know is that then from when we actually started Defenders, I was already then seeing what you was doing and a fan of what you was doing from then, my bro. So oh, it's like brother. a lot of the time when we're coming into this industry, people ain't seeing the stuff that we're doing because we're then actually active and all that. But yeah, you was pulling some crazy music. I was like, what the hell budget is this guy working with? And like, how did he get on there? And, oh, brother, thank yeah, you. So, yeah, yeah. Did so, you hear that from you? No, it's, it's, so it's, uh, we were seeing those moves from early, my bro. So yeah. Yeah, literally, that's one thing. I've been like an observer of the whole scene. I've seen each genre and then seen those that have kind of set the pace. And then really, like, after you then done um, even, I think, like, maybe, like, the tours with, like, Prince and these other artists, no one else has then been able to get that beatbox or that kind of b-boy to the next, kind of that next stage, man. You know what I mean? I've seen the, the DMC lot. They've done some amazing stuff the for the DMC. culture. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But other than DMC, yeah. like, yeah, that b-boy culture hasn't had that representation so props to you man. thank you yeah 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 right yeah, yeah, yeah. stay tuned next week you, got... <laughs> <laughs> you know what i mean so yeah just to blessing, put it there guy, yeah, i've seen the full narrative that's part of the blessing and the curse of me is that i've seen when artists wasn't big or i've mm. seen who really was street or wasn't street mm. so i've seen the true narrative along the way that's interesting so. because as as a character yourself and we did we did have a chat before we jumped. We we have a lot to catch up on and talk about. To be fair, you yeah. and me share a very similar a dual career span, and that that's extremely flattering. That coming from a person like yourself, that because you're a study, you are a study of the craft of entrepreneurial business within the music industry. I find that incredibly. It's curious. I want to know, like, all right, cool. Well, if he's checking me, who else he checking that? Like, because I know you ain't stopping at any point soon. Mm -mm. It's a, it's a, it's. It's a, it's an art, isn't it? Yeah, no, it's something that I love doing. At the, at the moment, I feel like I've just warmed up. I've just mm. figured out what I'm doing. So mm. for where Defenders is at now, this is just the new chapter. Mm. Where, yeah, it's franchise time now. This is time to grow. So, yeah, it's an important time. I feel like for not just UK music, but even for like what we do with young people and mm. the next generation. It's when Defenders was started on all of the early flyers. The small print said it was Defenders of the Younger World Man. Management. Mm. So I've still got that email now, dywmanagement management at AOL.com. You know what I mean? I've still got the same phone number 20 years later. Does you know he, what I mean? So, no, nah, he don't stop. That's yeah, what so, about. Like, so, really, like, yeah. And we started off wanting to give young people a platform to be creative. At that stage, like, my first artist was Blade Brown and Lady Fury, yeah. working with, like, the Nasty Boys and uh, Nasty One Crews and all well. that. Yeah, Heady and those, like, they're the new school of it, like, your Heady's oh. and your Harlem's and your Zone 2's. Those are the 
ones that are using the space now. Mm -hmm. And then like my artists I'm managing now, Crystal, mm -hmm. she, she's the one I'm most excited about oh, because wow, I, have, yeah, I haven't had an artist um, really around me in years that has then had me that excited, like of everything that they do. So I'm a very big fan. I'm obviously biased, but mm -hmm. yeah. Um, I don't know, man. I think the last time even a UK artist caught my ears like that, even though it wasn't my artist, was when I first heard Dave. So that's the only, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Really, yeah. When he done that Jekyll Tough. and Hyde thing. When yeah, I, yeah, yeah, yeah. that Jekyll and Hyde. I said, who the hell is this kid? Like, yeah, that on repeat, like for yeah. days. Like, yeah, yeah, that. That caught me, and I didn't, never met this kid or anything. But I was like, "Yeah, this this Dave guy, Bro, there's, there's something like about him." Now. Yeah, yeah. New you know when him. you think to yourself, "Oh, wait a minute, I've heard it, but not like that." Yeah, <laughs> what's yeah, this? just like that. Yeah, what's this? Yeah, yeah. That's the, yeah. I get that feeling. So, yeah, it's always been to support young talent. Yeah, yeah and then now we've just kind of grown, got an opportunity to expand what we're doing and just starting again. And I was happy for the for the COVID as well. Mm. Like much as most people was thinking, like I was happy for the lockdown, to be yeah, honest. Me yeah, kind of. Yeah, <laughs> no, I, bro, yeah. It, it, the industry needed a lockdown. Reset. It needed, yeah, it a, reset. needed a reset. It needed the smoke and mirrors to stop. He needed everyone to then have a nice because when you're congested then, as fuck it was congested as well as then like social media and things like that as well yeah. was playing part of the problem because mm. there was a lot of smoke and mirrors. So even if you're putting in the hard work, you maybe then feel to yourself like you're not working because yeah. everybody else is celebrating. When yeah. there's only then work going on now, nobody's celebrating or pretending to. Then it's very clear to see like, okay, Ra, you're not then actually. Doing as bad as me, yeah. You're actually you're, on this thing now, so yeah. I think it's a very exciting yo, time. Yo, you're the first person to actually say it how it is, and it's so fucking true. Back then, and I say back then because he's pushing yeah, on there yeah. like over a year. Yeah, it's ACBC, man. Before yeah. COVID, after COVID. Yeah, yeah, so, yeah. yeah. BC, yeah, yeah. So in BC, <laughs> when they had dinosaurs and 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 Instagram made you feel like he wasn't winning. I'm saying. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, 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 you yeah. know, we've all changed form and shape. You yeah, know what I yeah, mean? It's yeah, like we've evolved we, now we've and evolved. everything like that. But yeah, <laughs> BC, mean? yeah, it was different. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it was. And uh, you're right to 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 call it how it, we saw it. Uh, it was proof in the pudding when. For instance, DJs, we really saw who was the who was the dedicated lovers of the choice of music that they played, because they'd be on Twitch playing the songs. Not only that retained the credibility that he's playing in the clubs, but they played their own experimental stuff too, and yep. they loved it. Yep. and it was woman is DJing and not because they're getting paid, mm. but because they love, love being it. it. Yeah, yep. and I think that's what the balance is because in this music thing, like we were saying a little a while ago, like um, the, literally you got to put in that time. Like how many hours you said? Ten thousand yeah. unpaid hours, mm, something like that. Yeah, yeah, yeah the minimum. That's what the reality of this thing is. So if you don't love this yeah. this is not an industry for you to get into because yeah. yeah this is this is putting in that work so the DJs yeah. there that throughout the lockdown the stage just true to their passion and their love and those are the down. ones them that literally when this whole thing's over their their tours and their shows and all that's gonna be crazy with a whole yeah, different yeah. Slant. When we talk about 10,000 hours, let's just interject right there and, and give you a debrief. 20 years, Defenders Entertainment. And as previously spoken up to this point, yes, he's collaborated with a lot of people. Um, I mean, old to new. I mean, before we even started, we were getting into some Blade Rodney P. You know, yeah, so yeah, that's old is out there. Yeah, that Freddy Krueger and... So I uh, thought yeah. we'd use this as a respite. This is a time to debrief, give a new audience a sense of clarity at this halfway milestone in, in, a, in, a, in an average, you know, worker's career trajectory. You're at this beautiful halfway point. Tell us, uh, tell us where it begun. To be in the situation that you are now, and I ain't underplaying this, you, you watched the ride on this one and some serious conversations. Where did it all begin, Corey? Where, where did it start? Um, I was saying when I was 10. So, like, universal people going around to um, different schools in Brixton looking for kids that could rap and everything at the time. They wanted to um, make some music about them not destroying the ozone layer, like the whole climate change thing. Um, yeah, was, we used to rap and do all this stuff at break time. Literally, before I knew it, I was in the studio, at Soul to Soul Studios. Really great concept. The song was kind of shit, if I'm honest. But that was my first introduction because I'm on like whack a day. I'm on dance energy. Yeah, 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 yeah. I'm hey, you got start sorry. Yeah, yeah. The I'm influences were. <laughs> yeah. So I was there like proper, like kind of saw that pop world of it, and then yeah, fast forward a few years of being like a naughty teenager and 
kind of living life and the rest of it. Brixton? Um, yeah, Brixton and Stratton my whole life. Um, obviously, when they're not away and stuff like that. And um, yeah, I, I kind of then started putting on events and like under 18s and started putting my money into raves. And then started then getting loads of artists and DJs then mm. coming up to me. Then I started then investing in radio stations. Mm. And then from there, now I'm like, okay, then Larry, you know what? I need to then get some of these artists in the studio, bearing in mind. So I don't own a studio or nothing like that. So mm. I'm just kind of hiring studio um, out for a couple of weeks. And they said, okay, you know what? I'm going to start doing this label side of things. Um, I just started ringing around um, anyone I knew that knew one of these rappers from different ends. Like, I swear, you know Rodney P, right? Yeah, you phone him and tell him, yeah, I'm coming into this rap thing, right? You know, Freddie Krueger, yeah, phone him and tell him I'm coming into this rap thing. I'll type Freddie Krueger. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <gasps> yeah I just got work to that. I remember that. Yeah. When you talked about it before, I was like, Freddie! <laughs> yeah, no, come on, man. He's a legend. People don't realise that. He's, he was doing them big American... Mm? Collaborations. Well, yeah, S A S as well. S A S. Come on, them lot was them signed with Dipset and yeah. stuff like that. You know what I mean? I saw them boys when I had too much um signed with um Mario Winans and Puffy. Them, mm. I saw them boys that are in New York couple times and stuff like that. You know what I mean? Them days, Professor Green and his boys, they was just doing jump off and battles and stuff. Yeah, they yeah, wasn't. They the was early haunted. doors was, of that. Yeah, as well. they was haunted house at the time. You know what I mean? Like oh. I remember those days. So, yeah, Defenders then started just as um an underground label that wanted to give the kids studio time. Um, and then before I know it, we're then hooked up with Jenny Francis. So shout out to her, because even Stormzy put her on the interlude of his album, because he grew up listening to her show every day. And if it wasn't for her, mm. really then introducing me to some people in the industry, giving mm. me that constant airplay on her show every day and that exposure. Mm. Yeah, I maybe wouldn't even have taken the music that that serious, to be fair, because mm. we wasn't making music to make money. We just wanted to just express how we was feeling. It was just mm. the love of what we do. It wasn't that we thought, oh, yeah, we're going to do this music thing. We was going and doing, like, bookings and radio every week on Deja and doing shows and that just to get heard. Mm. We just, every Friday, go to, like, Carnaby Street to do a real... <laughs> You know what I mean? Yeah. Like, you know what I mean? Like, yeah, do the little hip hop cypher on a Friday and stuff like that. Like, mm -hmm. it's rammed right out onto the street and stuff always. like that, always and stuff like And then, times there, um, we had the other boys then with the hip hop shop round the corner, Dark and Cold. Oh, un unsung. Listen, Dark and Cold. Were it. They connected UK and America, like the whole thing. Like people huh? forget Dark huh? and Cold, that was the connect. Before Junglist Movement and all the other yeah, brands. Nah, dark, dark and Cold, cold set yeah. this whole thing. That's what I said, I got the true narrative because mm -hmm. I was there. I mm -hmm. saw what was happening the mm -hmm. whole way through. Mm -hmm. So Dark and Cold, they started bringing over the American act because that's when I got to like Buck, like 50 and Eminem mm -hmm. and all them, like where they're just happy for get little, little, yeah. little shine little on the, shine okay, on the mic yeah. and like, yeah, yeah, little boom, come and do little shows. These ain't no mega stars or nothing like that. These right. are artists on their grind. And like, um, yeah, Dark and Cold, they was patterning up all of that then before mm -mm. anyone else because them and a dude named Digger, he, he had a little publishing set up. He was the only one who was spending money on this hip-hop thing. Mm. So, yeah, Wild uh, Pitch, Wild, wild Pitch. pitch. Yes. And Mr. Bongos as well? Yes, exactly, Bongo. yeah. Black that's, Market. Yeah, exactly, Black Market. And that. But them lot was then where they was capitalising the drum and bass thing. Mm. Wild Pitch and them lot and Dark and Cold, they was investing in this hip-hop thing they, the they, they, for Definitely me. Definitely, them. And then Jump Off then came in and started them giving the B-Boys them a shake. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And then you got all the components that are active mm. and all in the West End. They're all doing their yeah, thing. Yeah, was. Dill the clothing, jump the B-Boys. Yeah, there and... was. They all then, that, but that's where it started. It wasn't a Shoreditch thing. This nah. is a Carnaby Street mm. movement that then started this UK hip-hop thing, you know what I mean? So, like, literally, we was coming from north, south, east and west and coming to Carnaby Street. That was like the home of hip hop. That's where that's where this sound then started. That's where mm. Vice magazine had to put out their first issues. That's where the little booklets, yeah, not the, the little big not ones. the big one, the little booklets of Vice <laughs> magazine and stuff. <laughs> you know. So that's where, yeah, that's where this culture started in Carnaby Street. Yeah. Mm, um, when you say wild pitch, rare groove, and all these different, I, I, th and in West London and that man, there was that um that place where Slick Rick and them lot performed. Subterranean or Subterranean. <gasps> Subterranean, yeah. That's where then the hip hop and life started. That was a that was some, I remember they used to do whenever a store had a party, like a ten year anniversary, mm -hmm. they go subterranean. Yeah, come on, it's just... 
ran out, like yeah, but busy. just for that kind of musical culture, that was part of it, you know what I mean? So that's uh-huh. where, yeah, and then boy, we started doing mixtapes, putting on artists. The beginning, first um, like artists we was even then like always supporting all the artists around us. So at that time, it's like SMS and PDC, and then every year or so, it's just the new sound from the streets. Mm. I guess that's. Mm. So whatever the genre is, we've been then involved in that genre. And like in 2010, when they were saying that we're just urban, mm. we then started the This Is um compilation series. Yes, yeah, Where I'm that. like, yeah, this is UK rap. Yeah. This is UK grime. Yeah. This is dancehall. This is funky house. Because they kind of were saying, yeah, everything's urban. And I'm like, no, like mm. everything's not urban. Clever little box packaging from the media. Yeah. But it was it's the media and plus as well, it's like I remember when it changed from being black music, which it actually was, mm. to actually being urban. Yeah. Because if even if people Google it now, I'm sure it's still online, the whole slogan for BBC One Extra when they started is we love black music. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That was their thing. And then they totally. changed it to we love urban music. But that was their slogan for the first couple of years. So then, then from there, the media decided, yo, you know what, this is urban and then became it. But it always then had a thing. But because it wasn't about a cultural or thing divide. It was just that they needed to find a way that showed that, yeah, okay, this is a sound everyone's making, but they're still... If, we've, if you've got then what they call Asian music or you've got what mm. you call then reggae or thing, it doesn't come with a... Just like our UK, it doesn't come with a... Um, a skin tone or come with mm. a religious belief mm, 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 it comes mm. now with a class divide yes because cla- classism <laughs> is our issue more than racism now yeah. you know what I mean and that's then the realness of it so they need to find a way to kind of class everybody mm. I guess that's the only way they could logically then find so mm. I understand the thing of it where some people say oh but they just changed it but I'm like yeah well the way they just changed it is because from when that sound of like grime drum and bass jungle mm. that was then the sound of London that mm. sound of London was very multicultural yeah. that sound was then about those poorer classes needing a voice mm. so then that then what then made it like urban for them because they didn't know another way of explaining us and you understand, you understand why these guys been doing it for 20 plus years this is they changed it on us but I understand why as well so Mm. it's like because we've had different ways that they've even articulated as towards why grime started and because of canary wolf and the rest of it when Mm. really if you look at the drill sound now you look at grime you look at where rap was at then um to where rap's at now Mm. then the whether you change the tempo or even if i start like beating my glasses against this glass or whatever the Mm. beat is yeah yeah what they're saying is just the social and economic issues that they're facing. They're still faced with, they still apply, like we were saying about Dave, you know, it just sounds different, but it's talking in a way that, you know, it's, it's, to, it's, to the, it's, it's speaking to the, the, the crowd. <laughs> yeah, what they understand yeah. is they somehow they can relate. And then yeah. the ones who then maybe can't relate, they can still feel the energy of what it is and feel that realness. That's why a lot of the time when I speak to artists about them making music that's real, keeping it real isn't about keeping it gangster. Keeping it real is then making music that's real to you because mm. even if you're a little kid and you're rapping about, rah, mum won't let me play out and rah, I hate having cereal every morning bear other youths them mm-hmm. can't get to play out and can't and they hear mm-hmm. having cereal in the morning so before you're not your song's number mm-hmm. one on tiktok mm-hmm. but everyone can relate mm-hmm. <laughs> but if there's no kid you'll be out smashing that dash i'm saying no nah, my guy what's your reality what's mm-hmm. real what's real in your life and i feel that that's where like for me like even when i stopped making music because i've gone from being that artist and then once i started the studio um, and started to get more, started my charity, I started to become much more involved in the office life. Mm. I couldn't then make music about being on the streets or about hustling and that because I wasn't doing that anymore. How did you feel about that transition from being, you know, having the majority of your, the percentage of your brain diverted to the creative side and then having to kind of filter through and factor in and uh, almost overpower your mind to be more working in an office mindset? Um... Hard at first, I guess, um, because as like a creative, even like now, I'm I'm still having to always adjust. So a lot of the way I do things is very unorthodox compared to then. Yeah, <laughs> all that. Welcome all to the, the party, other. pal. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> so yeah, so my approach to most things is not normal even now. But perhaps but, um, that's that's what that's the endearment of like, or at least the. the you're rejigging things to a different way of thinking that not a lot of people would in normal conventional business. 
Yeah, I think that that comes with some of the blessing, also comes with the curse that you've got. Then you, I'll think, uh, like I say to people all the time, like I'm four eyes with the foresight. You know what I mean? So I can see what's coming up the road, but mm. then sometimes you can see what's then coming it, when you act upon it, how you act upon it. Like everything's timing. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, and I feel like sometimes I've done things that's been ahead of their time, so that's also been that's like a, a thing. Of a yeah, curse, yeah, because it? yeah, I've, it's like anything, man. I've, yeah. I've you come to the party too early. You turn up at like, especially like me, I'm in I'm in like the Jamaican community. Mm. So you mm. go to a bashment dance even up until like 12, mm. 12 o'clock at night. It's dead, tumbleweed, everything. You're thinking, what's going See, on? See, I'm always the one that got there early. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> now come two a.m. Ah, yeah, it's ram. You're uh, thinking, what the fuck? But you turn up to a bashment dance early, yeah. You, <laughs> that you're thinking, yeah, this is not, it's not the spot. But literally, so yeah, I feel like that's been me, man. I've turned mm. up to the dance early. Mm, timing is the qu- timing to a lot very, of yeah, yeah, to very, a lot of artists. Key. It's the difference between being a cult classic and being a pop sensation. If you're too early, you're a cult classic. Yeah. If you're on time, it pops and says. Yes, and that's the that's the thing of it. And I feel like that's with most of the stuff is that with me, I've been this blessed that as much as when I've had then different things that have maybe been emotional hurdles, whether it's my personal life, family life, um, whether it's then the financial circumstances or whether it's business circumstances, mm. I've always just um, stuck to the fact that I'm not doing it just for money. And I think that's what's been my win. Because if I was doing it just for money, I'd have fucking given up a long time ago. Mm, you've got to have a con- yeah, You've yeah, got to have yeah. a reason. Yeah, and I, was, I think that because I was just always trying to then get what I was doing to a certain place, mm. I'll get up every day and, and do what I'm doing, even mm. if I'm not getting mm. paid, even if I'm not making money. And I think that that's what a lot of people have seen this gold rush mm. like that's happened. But really, this is the seventh gold rush that I've seen. Yeah, 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 yeah. Seventh time when labels start, started signing everybody, excuse me. And um, seventh time I've seen like everyone's getting shows, everyone's winning, and then it literally it goes completely dead. Mm-hmm. Nobody's getting a do or meal for about 80 months to two years. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah then yeah. we've got to go back, build something from the underground <laughs> again. Yeah. And then from all of a sudden, because then some new sounds playing and boom and getting its own money, it's starting mm-hmm. to get a buzz. Mm-hmm. Then now, yeah, right, we're back again I feel like yeah we've got to get past that bit now now is when even as an industry we need to develop mm. artists develop that next sound we need mm. to then look about things them like their mental health their financial health we mm. need to have, because we're coming from poor communities where we don't have financial or um any form of we don't have financial literacy mm. we don't have um like that political literacy mm. Like, yeah, we don't have any form of um, the education that we need in order then for us to live in, in the normal society. And we'll that's be, before Bitcoin, NFT and all this other stuff you're yeah, talking about. Yeah, I'm talking about the basics. Ooh, yeah, the we're basics, we're yeah. learning things in, like, in, in school that we're never going to use. Yeah. They're not life Man. skills. I, I, I don't remember the last time I used algebra or the <laughs> last time that I... <laughs> um, pyro, what, pyro, what, whatever that was I don't that remember bar chart that goes up <laughs> and down yeah, yeah, lines yeah, and all that it's <laughs> a good majority of it because to <laughs> be fair we're being taught like from like the the different layers of society yeah. and us that's coming from the poorer communities our creativity is our biggest thing that we've got like that's mm. I think most people really really underestimate like then for something that we can have that can make something out of nothing mm. England hasn't got nothing else that they're manufacturing for the world right now at all no one's waiting for they, our they're ship already, or... they're strangling they're already strangling the music thing <laughs> yeah exactly but this is our this is what we've got right now yeah. they need to manufacture and harvest this creativity 100%. that's our that's our thing to give to the world whether it's like from your one directions to your storms mm. to your heady ones mm. and the, to the drill sound to what we do on live the live engineers the, the even the musicians and stuff like England has put a massive mm. boom part of its income comes from what we do in entertainment so mm. I feel like that's what needs to be established is that development not just for um oh street music but just development for this young talent and culture of, of what we do f- regardless of the genre i think yeah. that's what's missing yeah yeah and that's what i'm massively advocate for so as much as my thing's hip-hop like boy you never know my next act might be a rock act and yeah. stuff like that yeah because my thing's good music hey, yeah not... i mean yeah, i mentioned yeah, at yeah, start yeah, yeah, swedish yeah. house mafia yeah, yeah, dizzy's done the whole thing vamps like you 
like yeah I'm not stuck in one genre I'm there yeah I'm always trying different things I'm in the gaming world right now I'm there oh yeah oh, oh yeah we got and, that as well <laughs> yeah, yeah we got some this, levels today yeah there's like yeah there's things that mm. I'm still just venturing into so shout out to yeah, to Benedict and the team mm. as well like the um, Electric Noor um, tech team that mm. we partnered with mm. they um, developed while we then partnered with them a little while ago now a couple of years it's gone by quick but they developed a whole crime series like only way I can describe it it's like Cluedo what's the name of the game because I did check it out Dead, Dead, Man's, Dead Man's Phone Dead Man's Phone and yeah. it's, it's, it's almost like you, the app is the, the kid's phone yeah and within that app is all the layout and formation of what the last thing was that he he was a part of on his phone and you got to go through the phone and figure out... Yeah, how he got killed is all this thing. Yeah, got a BAFTA nomination last year. So big up to BAFTA and them lot. You're dealing um, greatness on the podcast. Yeah, um, as well as then like, yeah, um, Alex Hong, the core creator of Candy Crush, has come on board with the team with Electric North, so them lot doing some amazing moves there mm. as well. And then, yeah, we've got the mixtape we're going to put out later on in the year when the game has an update with a music player on there called Vibes. So we're just kind of, yes, but this is there. So we're just kind of testing in different industries right now. You know what I mean? I think that's a big part of it as well, is I've never been stuck in... Mm. Yeah, because when, when I came to my studio, it, it was like a video production team. I only came there to actually um, to license the videos they was making for Channel U because I was building like YouTube and Spotify at the time. Because I was like, okay, well, I don't have an iPhone, so where do I get music from on this internet thing? Mm -hmm. So I then got some tech teams and stuff like that and started then building the technology. And um, yeah, if I just actually done the HTML version, I was stuck on having flash animation. <laughs> if I listened to them and just done the HTML version... Mm -hmm. Yeah, 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 you exactly forget it. Yeah, I'd have gone to the moon by then, but me, I needed the bells and whistles because I was convinced, like, yeah, no, the mm. internet can do all the stuff that it's doing now. I yeah. wanted it to do, like, 20 years ago. Getting ahead of the curve. Yeah, yeah. but I'm like, no, nah, man, it must can do this. And when they come on the site, it has to open up and mm. do... Yeah, if I just listened and done the the boring version, but mm. I guess all the other stuff I wouldn't have ended up doing, I wouldn't mm. have been in the tech world a lot, lot to earlier. To a lot of people, to a lot of people that are listening to this right now, Corey, um, and this is the mark of an expert, uh, it, you you make it sound very easy. Now, I know those situations when you're in a record store or a club, but I've, I've been there and I can, feel the, I can feel the energy, my intentions, like especially as a younger person, it's impossible to not feel as look as thirsty as you feel and you're around these people and you're like yo how do I, I do, all I want to do is just I want him to be aware of me I want her to connect I bro, want to, it's so hard isn't it and to a lot of people that'd be like bro, they're there it, now it's not easy at all I've been there mm. made that um, yeah. same mistake on loads of occasions and depending on also as well what you're going through mm. in your um in your personal or even in your work life. Financial life, yeah. Or financial, like, for us as creatives, like, doubt is our kryptonite. The way maybe then you're feeling it right now is I don't have no doubt around me. I don't mm. have people that are doubting in my life. Is right that now. age? No, um, I think it's then to do with um, having the clarity and understanding yourself because I know yeah. some young people that understand themselves. To the top. To, like, whoa, I'm yeah. if only I was like you when yeah. I was 22. Where would I be now? Do you know what yeah. I mean? So I can't then say it's down to age. I think it's down to having the ability to then listen to yourself and listen to God rather than you mm. having all the other voices that sometimes clouds out. Get them out of the way. Yeah, and Get things. Them so out of the some way. people, their life circumstances have allowed them to yeah. have a little bit more clarity. So they've got themselves together mm. a bit earlier. There may be some that of us that have had more chaotic lives. Mm. I feel that's the. But definitely not um easy. I've definitely um been the one to either oversell what I'm doing or feel like I'm just want to get it done or mm. whatever not. And in that side of it, you end up either getting the raw deal or end up getting no deal. And that's yeah. been yeah. And then I've had times like most people wouldn't know is and everything is that away from then or some would know that away from my sister passing the same time that one dance happened. Me, myself, I didn't ever go out and hear the song um, in the club while I was number one for 15 weeks. I didn't Rest ever go peace. out and peace, go out and celebrate or anything mm. like that. Like, that wasn't where I was at. So there's so many opportunities that I did then miss off the back of it. So right. you could have been able to then do that thing where people would have wanted to come up to me, but I wasn't there. Yeah. For, for those mean? of so, just so yeah. that, just to, yeah, just to, on, the, on this position right here and, you know, this chapter of the, the podcast... 
Um, one dance. Um, Drake's, in my opinion, is fine as fucking. I mean, I'm a I, listen, and I've said it many times on the podcast. I am a Drake fan, and uh, you know, just just the to to, to be in a position of um, authenticity and have the success. Drake's got it. That's that's just my opinion. And one dance for me was it epitomised that relationship between Canada and the UK, and just and you being part of that mix in making that transition happen. Come on, smashed it, Bro. smashed it. How did it? How did how did this come about? How did how did that come? Um, about? My lawyer called me. Um, do be like, um, do I know Drake? I'm like, brother, do you know who Drake is? You know what I mean? Like, <laughs> you're asking me if I know Drake. Like, come on, man, he ain't, he ain't a big, big pop star, but come on, my guy, I mm, listen to the mixtapes mm, and all this mm, stuff. Mm, he's, he's hot on the road. Because it was at that mean? time. It yeah, he was right? still like on tapes. So I listen, you, you catch Drake like on a little mixtape on YouTube or stuff mm-hmm, or Spin mm-hmm. Rilla. Mm-hmm, he wasn't mm-hmm. then like, yeah, that that day. You know what I mean? I don't sure if he even had like any bait features or that or anything. Maybe little Rihanna or someone, but he wasn't then. Bars, like, baby, bars yeah, for yeah, days. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But bars for days, yeah, he had that. Like, that was at the same time, like, Migos and them lot was yes, doing their little right. thing. So, yeah, he was just getting, like, it was the same, like, Migos were putting out a mixtape every week. Yeah, he was on that. Yeah, yeah, he was. He was, he was cut was, above, though, man. Yeah, he was, but his thing was standing out for yeah. him. So, yeah, so I'm like, okay. Um, ended up then having a, a, literally a call with his manager, um, just literally future and stuff. It was me and Pearlface. Um, he said, yeah, he wanted a range of freeway called, wanted to play us a song that he's then got at the time. I'm I'm not even sure what or what's going on. Mm. Um, wow, well, when I heard the song, the first thing I said is, bro, yeah, I believe this is going to do all right. Like, this sound like a song my mum's going to get to hear it. Mm. Yeah, well, I'm definitely not going to be able to sell the rights on this mm. one. We need to do the business right. Mm. At the time, like, everyone else, they, they're saying, go sign, sign, sign. I said, listen to be good. I'm going to spin the spin the wheel <laughs> and where God wants it to land. <laughs> It went down to me, I'd have spun it three more times and off for more and more. I should have really even spun it. Yeah, that wheel of fortune moment. Yeah, but everyone's all in my arm. Yeah, everyone's all in my arm. Like, no, I say, no, trust me. If we go back to them one more time on the email and just say that we would like... Bro, how much balls that take, though? That must have just been like, in your head, come on. That must have been like, oh, fuck. Wait, it wasn't a situation to fuck up, I can't lie, but my heart was just telling me, say, right, if you don't ask, you don't get in it. Like, I'm a poor kid coming from the streets. Like, Ross, I'm like, right, these man's going to get me. Yeah, I'm gonna need boom me accredited as writer, mm. publisher, and as a label life changing because shit, it, yeah. yeah, yeah, no, um, that that's um forever then changes that life and also just opens up doors I ain't even then bothered to knock on yet. Do you know what I mean? That doors that have then been hollering at me, I've not bothered to walk through. But mm. yeah, really, like yeah, that was an amazing blessing. Went out to South Africa with them boys as well. So went to Johannesburg, went to Soweto to like a place called Clip Town. Like like real ghetto, like where people's like living in zinc, f- um, like fence houses and stuff like that. Wow! Or like we're rolling around, like in there, it's mad. Like in in South Africa, the security's like the um Dutch guys, like the Boers. Mm. So mm. yeah, mm. they're rolling around with us with these mad machine guns and all. But in in South Africa, their class is terrorists. What? Yeah. What? Yeah, if you're rolling around in South Africa and you and you and you ain't black and you got a machine gun, you're a terrorist. Cool. Wow. Yeah, it's crazy, but we rolling with them, man. I felt much safer. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not gonna pretend, but yeah, that's how this is. What's what's crazy, yeah, bro? Yeah, 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 yeah. But <laughs> beautiful place. So yeah, went to the old um. Literally, so yeah, we done the four seasons and that. Them man, wait, their bars is real, real life. Um, yeah, went to Clip Town, saw the real, real ghetto and that. And um, no, just an amazing thing to open up. But like I said, I wasn't mm. in the position to capitalise. And I feel that's why even you're saying, yeah, um, making it look easy and the rest of it. It's funny, like I have a running joke that like people, um, because maybe I'm so laid back or it's the Jamaican side of me, people think, oh yeah, man, he's just making it seem so easy. I'm like, bruh, believe me, this has not mm. been easy not mentally, not emotionally. It's been, yeah, it's been a whole battle in itself. And I feel that that's the part of it, what people don't want to admit that, yeah, if you love this thing, you need to go to your bed hungry. Mm. Like, it's going to mess up your personal relationships. It's going to mess up your um, business relationships. You're going to make mistakes. Something always suffers. And I feel that that's the part of it where no one wants to just admit that, like, yo, in order for me to get here, I have a shit I had to give. Yes, cross to bear. There's a cross to bear on it. Yeah, yeah, you're absolutely right. You don't know, like, sometimes I could be in my own mental pain because I'm just 
programmed the way I am. My intentions of, yeah, I love my family. My actions don't represent that. You know what I mean? Like, there's loads of people that take L's in different ways to get to the place they are. So you can't afford to be sitting there going, yo, what the fuck's he doing? What's she doing? How come, but, but, nah. No, it don't work like there's that. There's L's so that are being hit. There's L's like hit. crazy and mm-hmm. the stuff like that. Yeah, like, so I know that, yeah, I've definitely um, had that balance. So as much as then, yeah, there's crazy winds, crazy doors and things that are um, happening, mm-hmm. I also then very mindful and we always remember that, yeah, there was times I'm like, right, am I actually doing the right thing? Mm-hmm. I'm always this. Self-doubt. Yeah, and that's the mm-hmm. thing. That's what I said to you, like, with us as cre- creatives, like, Doubts are kryptonite. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So if you've got like doubt in your in your work life, then you'll start doubting your personal life and start mm. doubting your music. If you've got doubt in your personal life, you'll start doubting your work Facts. and start. So it's because you've got those people that would even plant seeds of doubt, mm. or you've got people that will water them. But before mm. you know it, you've got a forest of doubt in your head. Mm. So it's like, yo, for me, that's why I don't really then deal with people that they might have their own doubt. So because they've got all these doubt, they're trying to then take doubt out of their head and put in mind. I'm like, bro, I don't even com- communicate with those sorts of people. Just no. to protect my energy because I feel that that's the massive thing that creatives don't understand is that our energy and protecting our light is the most important thing because yeah. we can't deal with doubt. That's what the thing that will make us Protection. not put out that mm. record, not take that leap of faith. And then compared to like when we're younger, like that's what it is. So for me, um, yeah, I just be like a kid with what I do. I think mm. that's what maybe um, why I then do the bits I do because I don't have no doubt. This is what's going to happen. This is how it's going to be. And if, if I don't think that's how it's going to be, then I just don't do it. But you make it look fun. <laughs> yeah, because I'm having fun with you. I have fun every day. Yeah, really, you I... look like you, you, you... I mean, and I know I know a lot of this is because of the um, the genres in which you, you choose your lanes on. Like, it's a youthful sport. It's a fun sport. Yeah, I feel, that, yeah, yeah. I feel, that, part, I feel that part of it definitely plays because a lot of the um, different genres, like, even if I do, like, stuff where it's reggae and it's a bit um, like the Jay Prince, new school artist, but he's coming with that older sound... It's like, yeah, how are we then bringing through these new school talents? Because he's based in Jamaica and stuff, like yeah. my next artist coming through. He's right. much more of a Grammy artist, so uh-huh. like, I'm excited about him as much as Crystal. Those are the next two that are my focus as far as then acts. And it's like, really, um, yeah, I've got the the blessing of then doing what I enjoy and everything. So I always say it like, even to my sister, I said, right, I don't go to work. I go to nursery. Mm. <laughs> you hear me? So, like, like, so, so I go to play every day. I don't know everyone else does, but my thing's not yeah, work. Sometimes like, the play gets serious, but yeah, we're still yeah, playing. Yeah, we're still playing, man. Sometimes people get hurt in the playground. Yeah, you know yeah, what I mean? Yeah. It's part of it. But no, but generally, like, yeah, I'm, I go to play every day, man. Like those who's coming into this music thing and you don't love it or it's just mm. work. No, this is not. This is not the industry for them. Like, no, this is this is fun and games. This is mm, yeah, it's fun and games. Yeah, it is, man. If you're them feeling, if it gets to that point where it's not, that's when you need to kind of read. Because I've had when it's not fun and games. I've mm. had when it doesn't feel like it's working. You need to just step back and kind of then reevaluate what you're doing. Because then at the time, what's, what, how it will feel is that when you're then going through it, because it, it can be a cutthroat industry. Mm. So when you're going through it at the time, you feel like it's personal. You feel yeah. like it's you one. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. But when you step back now and you're just on the sideline, you see everyone else stabbing each other yeah, yeah. in the back anyway. You realise this shit's not personal, bro, it's I've business, said, bro. bro. I've said this before, especially in the early podcasts, like the, the first 60 were the most informative. They, it's not what they, saw, they talk on the podcast, it's what they talk after the podcast. Yeah. And you realise that some of the highest of the highest artists, the most established, they still have the same conversations and complaints and things that go on with the lower. Yeah. It's like, it's just, it's a, it's a, it's a run. Yeah. And you're, it doesn't matter where you are on the picking order of things and what people perceive you to be, it's still the same, yeah. the same gripes, the same problems. <laughs> you just got to take a step back and evaluate. Yeah, and at the time they're thinking, yeah, it's just them, but raw. when they then actually see, regardless of where they're at, it's still, yeah, it's everybody's going through it, man. So, hmm. no, totally, man, it's been a, like an exciting journey, but for, hmm. for us, it's like the new chapter now. It's hmm. like, yeah, so I'm I'm excited seeing how, what then I believe was then like, where UK rap and UK culture should be. Like hmm. all them years ago, I'm flying out to New York, I'm flying out to Miami and saying, hmm. yo, Oh, no, this is our music. Like, put us on. They're like, brother, I'm like, yeah, we, we got UK rap. <laughs> I remember I was in Miami at the Winter Music Convention. Like, 
fuck, when was that? That's before I even had the studio. So mm -hmm. we're talking like 16, 17 years ago. And I was saying, yeah, boom, you got my UK rap CD promoting my little thing. And they're saying, yo, man, yeah, UK rap's reaching out here. Like, you know Craig David, right? <laughs> I was like, oh. <laughs> <laughs> and I rate Craig David's yeah, yeah. thing. He's a G. Like, so big up Craig, big mm -hmm. up Miss Dynamite, because they was the only two that I heard their music in America back then. No yeah, yeah, one yeah, else yeah. was even. I heard Dizzy fix up as well. I yeah. jumped in a car over there. Sick. Went to music. Yeah, yeah, but I also did hear the others. They played all that, that yeah, way through. Yeah, that's what you heard them. Yeah, that yeah. it takes more. And rare, rare, I heard them, but yeah, but the fact that, yeah, that that was the closest thing they could see towards UK rap was that, mm. like, yo, that means that he was expecting when he put my CD in, my thing was going to then, yeah. was going to come with the Monday. Do you remember that? I say, no, <laughs> but I'll come in with my hard bricks, them bars, telling about the streets. <laughs> yeah, and that's not what they was anticipating from the UK, because at that time, people was finding it hard to accept that UK had street culture. Yeah, yeah, so yeah, that's yeah, what yeah. a big hindrance for rap was. It wasn't that the labels or anything like that. It was that us as a place that people saw as like um, like tea and crumpets and all the rest of it, because we didn't have really like gun culture, mm. they didn't, and even then when we did have it, it wasn't then like as mainstream like America. Then by the time we've got to this real gang culture that they're seeing now, mm. it's only because the media made such a hoo ha about all the stabbings and the mm. rest of it, or else the rest of the world wouldn't even even give embrace it the time this, of the year. giving it the time of the year either. So for what then it's funny that the media have then demonized. Yeah. They've also created this demand for these street kids because they've actually put a focus and made it. Mm. <laughs> this, yeah, the irony. It, yeah, the irony is that, yeah, because anything you demonize and that you made it that so you're not meant to have, then the other kids want it. So it's almost that's the case. The, so it's, that's the, the thing, you made it taboo, so you know what I mean? So it's like, yeah, if it's taboo, then you want it. Yeah. Even if you look like a year and two years ago, everyone's dress sense was very um, dark, very hoodies and all the mm. rest of it. But now we're getting to that whole colourful, mm. people are getting their dance routines going the mid -90s on. mid-90s look. Yeah, we're getting to the <laughs> mid-90s now, you know what I mean? Silk shirts is coming next. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah, yeah. Let's see, the Father MCs and yeah, what yeah, the other yeah, ones. Yeah, yeah, we're, getting, yeah, those like, those we're ones. getting to that era now. So yeah. we're at that Tupac and <laughs> yeah. Smalls era. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. We're just getting to that whole puffy and that yeah. little tick, that, we're getting tick, that Era, yeah. Getting so them blow up suits to yeah, be flying around. Yeah, and... it's getting to that bit now. Mm. Entertainment, it's getting to that yeah. fun. So we're gonna see then now hip hop culture then in itself have a room for there to be other artists other than just drill. But so, yeah, yeah, until right. we see their money even invested in developing this next talent or developing these next sounds. Unfortunately, yeah. even for the ones that you're saying that are being bottlenecked, like everybody, they're only trying to jump on this um, street wave because that's where the check's at. Yeah. If money yeah. was being spent on any of the other areas, yeah. people would be trying to go... Doing that too, to. yeah. But at the moment, as long as then, the, whether it's the powers that be or whichever machines, as long as they only spend money on kids that are from a gang or on street culture, mm. but won't then spend money on kids that are just talented then there's no way that anyone's going to feel that then other than going through the bottleneck is going to work for them. Mm. So I don't blame those people who's trying to fit in right now mm. because there isn't any other indication. And this is me that's waited like 20 years for the street culture to be like a thing. I knew it would be. I told my mum one day, being mm. be this naughty is going to work out. <laughs> you know <what> I mean? <laughs> yeah, yeah. In fact, be naughtier and you get more successful. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's yeah. The irony. Trust me, yeah, yeah. Now mm. it's like a PhD and letters after my name. But being my bad mom, pills feels pretty good, don't it? Yeah, yeah, yeah. It paid off finally, but fuck, that shouldn't be the route. You yeah, know what I mean? Yeah, so yeah. for me, I'm like, yeah, those real um, opportunities that are there should be available for just different sorts of talents. As soon as we start investing in different talents, so like for me, I'm investing in r and B. I'm investing in young talent. Mm. I'm bringing through kids that are not gang related as well because mm. all the gangers and bangers, they were yeah. around to be, that's I'm Uncle Cor, but it's like, well, yeah. there's good kids and a lot of the ones that are maybe in those gangs or crews, they're good youths. They're just mm. in mm. social circumstances. I'm mm. sure if there was then that sort of resource, a lot of them have got their little dance routines mm. A lot of them want maybe, oh, I just want to paint. Oh, I yeah, just yeah, want yeah. to do... 
my little pottery thing. You don't know, but right mm. now they just want to conform and fit into the... Yeah, yeah. And it will flush. Into, into I think, it, but I feel like entertainment's going to grow. Man. It I don't think do. everybody's as hard or as no. dark. And, no, no, I'd also I feel say like as we've well. got more to offer. I believe that. I For believe, sure. I've, yeah, I've, I've got more faith in, in the next mm-hmm. generation. I fully think that there's a wide range of very intelligent, very articulated, like eclectic individuals yeah, that yeah, are yeah. going to come through. Yeah, I don't think it's as... Dark, dark. So I'm like, yeah, man. The silk shirts are coming next. The moves is coming next. I'm, yeah, yeah, yeah. I believe uh, it. I uh, believe in them like that. You know what I mean? I'm like, yeah, this right. is entertainment. But we're gonna have big shows and dance routines, and, and it will naturally all yeah, integrate. Yeah, big stage, everything, man. These and and also, I might just level. might just add at this point, there is collaborations in in effect all the time. Uh, uh, Stormzy and Banksy, the collaboration they did at Glastonbury, big up that. Yeah. You know, MK with Dizzy, the Scratch DJ yeah, yeah. with Dizzy Rascal, and um, you know, just people that come from a rap background and, you know, Rag and Bone Man, MC, Battle MC, yeah, and yeah. now Sings, you know, yeah, like yeah. there's all of that, that does come into play, doesn't it? Yeah, still, and I it's thought, and then that's why there needs to be more money because since Rag and Bone Man, I ain't seen no next Rag and Bone Man kind of artist then really get a... Shine A shine I think, and no one can't say that there ain't no kid who got that talent, but he needs a budget. Mm. Budget's key. yeah. Definitely, but with algorithm, paid ads, and all the rest of it, you need that money. So uh, it's like, uh, yeah, uh, if you're gonna invest, if you could make another rag and bone man, because there would be definitely a kid that's that talented. But uh, who wants to invest in that sound? I don't know. Yeah. But I feel that there's more talent, more sounds, more things that we can then develop here in the UK. I feel yeah. that that's the thing. And much as then, yeah, the hip hop and um, underground rappers be mm. my thing. I'm I'm just a fan of good music. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Just good music. And I feel that that's what we need more of. So I feel like, yeah, we're a part of this arts and this heritage and um, a part of this music culture. We've we've contributed. The same thing I said to um, my friend at the BBC the other day is like Stormzy, he's the poster boy of our thing. Yeah. But, but most people don't even really actually putting it down to, but Stormzy and these drill artists, they're paying furlough. Mm-hmm. Their money in the last two years has it's contributed to the to the UK economy right. through streams, through shows, yeah. through royalties, PRS and BMI and beyond. Yeah. And that's what then the government's using because we haven't got nothing growing out of the ground or manufacturing anything, but the music that they've been streaming, that's been contributing to the economy. So Stormzy's paying furlough. Yeah, yeah. For, for that question. <laughs> <laughs> that's it. That's it. So, like, I'm yeah. saying. Yeah, so the parents need to be turning the drill up, turn up Stormzy. Yeah, yeah. play that, play that. Play that, play that. Put that on repeat. I, I, Go right I, I down Stormzy you, paying furlough. The drill scene is something that I'm just so fucking fascinated by because it holds all the hallmarks of the worst nightmare for any mum and dad, you know, living in happy suburbia, middle England. What the fuck's going on? They're coming for our kids. They're <laughs> coming for our kids. It's so NWA. It's amazing. Yeah, it <laughs> it's is. Like... And I think that's what makes um, it so exciting as well because a lot of even the artists, they're very intelligent business. Hell yeah. So this is now becoming the um, business that their friends and them are then building now. This yeah. is not just about one or two individuals. So mm. yeah, but at the same time as well, this is um, the music and the passion and their culture. These kids around um, around the world, they can feel the energy. And I feel that because it's getting, it. it's getting shown to them, I feel that, yeah, to the parents, it's, it may be coming across as it's scary, but it's not as scary as it sounds. I feel yeah. like the scary thing is most probably if, is that you're seeing a young force of kids that multicultural coming from these um, coming from these poor backgrounds yeah. and they're making money now. And I think that that's what the scariest Scare. thing is, is the social and yeah. the economic part of this, yeah. that it's not that they're just making music and, oh, they're, um, they're making music that's angry because all of them ain't. No. The scary bit is that they're making money and yeah. getting financial independence. And you can't stop them. And you can't stop them. Which and is the biggest power. Artistry, full stop. It's that fearless drive of what else have I fucking got yeah. when I'm doing this. Yeah, and that's it. And I feel that's what the thing of it is, is that <sighs> something that you can't stop, I think that's what people be scared of. Yeah. Yeah. Um, punk has that, had, still has, but Punk had that same reaction to Joe Public. And like you, you were saying about um, the media, the more it's portrayed, the more it's like 
for punks, an example of punk Motorhead when they first started, they were slated, slandered as being like the worst band in the world. But all the kids showed up because they wanted to see the worst band in the world. Yeah, and that's what, and I think that's what them comes. It's the same like with the mods and quadrophena types. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. That, that kind of youth culture and that kind of what we, what was Bell happening shit. with us, that rebellion. Yeah. That's what drove that sound yeah, yeah. and everything like that. It was about youth culture and what's happening within social and economic circumstances. Mm. That's what this sound is, regardless mm. of the genre. This isn't kids killing each other. This is kids talking about the circumstances they're in, yes. where then they're feeling like they have to kill each other or their friends are being killed because other people who then maybe have then marginalised them within society mm. have then restricted the resources from them having from primary school to youth clubs to even just general, um, their five little um, needs in mm. life even not being taken care of from an early age. Yeah, 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 yeah. These are social and economic results of this country neglecting Truth. the background and the ba and the backbone of those that work and keep it ticking over. Yeah. So, so don't shoot easy. the messenger boy. <laughs> Like they're just dropping the signs. <laughs> this is this is all there is. Is just, this is just the messengers to say, yeah, this is what mm. we've then created. Mm. The same way, like we then have people and we ship them out to country towns because they they maybe haven't kept up with their rent or mm. they then maybe not then as articulate as some of the others. Mm. But then we're then surprised that when you've got then a country town where there's a group of then vulnerable people, mm. where then they might then group get a group of any age of hustlers that's going to go there and be then supplying drugs to them and then taking prey on them but the government's kind of dumped everyone yeah, yeah, there yeah. where there's a lack of police lack yeah, yeah. of support lack of so I'll deal they, with that later yeah kind of so thing, yeah. it's like so are these is these then kids them are they then um, making the problem or are they just there because the problem's there are they then being the problem being made for them mm. so it's like the government's creating OT yeah, or are the kids because I, I, I don't know for me it's like why there's so many vulnerable people placed in the area with lack of resources, travel and policing. I yeah, don't know. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. The, 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 the human brain, it likes a beginning, middle and an end. This is like a... This is like a... A Kilroy, Jeremy Kyle, hour-long conversation to an audience telling the stories of what's right, what's wrong, and then they shut it off at the end. It's like, okay, what's yeah. the next thing? Oh, God. So and so and so, so just had a new kid on the, 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 the programme. Yeah. It's like, yeah, but this... This story continues and it keeps on going and it keeps on evolving. There's more, there's more casualties to the streets. There's more problems that are occurring with every twist and turn, and uh, yeah, like you say, drill is just a mere conduit to that, to that, that, mm. that story. It's a fucking scary time right now. Isn't yeah, it? I think for society, not for music, but for society. Yeah. Because unemployment highest in 300 years, mm. nothing that we're actually then providing to the rest of the world. Mm. Like, yeah, music, um, there's life in that. There's hope. Mm. There's, there's hope there's, in that, there's, yeah. there's money, there's an economy in that. Yeah. It's those that's not within our world that's then there. This is a scary time because, yeah, yeah what uh, what's the next generation going to be manufacturing? What are we selling to the world? Because mm. I know we're selling creativity and mm. we're selling music. I don't know what the rest of England's selling. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm. I've got a question for you, and uh, I think it'll be one that you're way more appropriately to be asking. Um, we're coming out, we've come out, we've come out of lockdown, hold tight, uh, get your glow sticks ready, we're going raving. Uh, industry, when going back into an industry, she has to change. It can't be how we left it. It just doesn't work like that. For it to really ramp up and for people that, you know, that are, have been in the game and they're moving and shaking, but they know that this lockdown has helped them because they've had to take stock, rejig, recalibrate with the things that they knew and change it into something else. What do you forecast is the, is the best opportunity for businesses now coming back into a, a landscape that marginally it ain't going to have so many clubs open. It's going to have a lot more financial um, losses than gains. In a, in a live circuit sense. So what's what's your vision of us coming back into uh, a, 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 an industry like music now? Um, two things. One, um, like it says on the tin, um, I'm in the entertainment business. I think that's the first thing that we need to remember, that this is entertainment more than just music. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So the way that um, we create film... Um, 
podcasts and stuff like that. This mm-hmm. is entertainment. Yeah, yeah. So I feel that, that that part of it is that more e facet and use of our music needs to be a bit more you um people need to utilize that a lot more. So it's like then you then create um opportunities for your music to be used in different ways. Mm. Um secondly, as far as then like live music, um I believe that there's two sides of it. This is where um, you've got the businessman in me and the independent revolutionist, and then you've got the reality of it. The maths of it is, is that if people work together and two artists decided that they was going to put on their own tour, even five dates, they'd get more money and be able to then even start at a 300 capacity mm-hmm. venue. And based on your sales, you could have another venue that's in the local area that if your sales are doing all right, you can move up to a larger venue, like a five, 600. You do like a couple shows like that, automatically the power then comes back then to the artist. Mm-hmm. and the revenue and stuff from that you'd be able to sell your merchandise mm. stream and do your thing and have the entertainment value that is what's going to then be <coughs> the way forward it's either that we have the mentality of get up and do or sit down and wait for it to be done I've never been one to sit down and wait for it to be done and okay. actually I'm there and that's what it is so we get up and do and I feel that that's what the difference mm. is I feel if we're going to sit around waiting to be given we ain't going to be given shit given. Yeah. Coy Johnson inside the place. Right. A real pleasure, my brother. Oh, come Honestly. On, man. No, pleasure is mine, my bro, man. I appreciate what you're doing as well. For not just yeah, for the hip hop, but just for the for the music culture, man. I see you, my brother, man. So my guy. My guy likewise. Killer Killer Podcast, Strike with Avengers once again. Blocker, come on. Yeah, Sharon's yeah. caring, you know what to do. We're out like him without a fashion. Don't talk to anyone I wouldn't. Stay lucky, people. Peace. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> boom. Oh, boom. That was nice, broski. <laughs>